Two bullets and one gun. We don't know what to do. What's yeah, up, candy killers? <laughs> this is Monster Candy Podcast, and I'm Screaming E. And we got Oubliette and back again is Money Mills. And today we're going to discuss. We're doing another showdown. Another showdown. showdown. Another versus. Another Rumble remake. Remake of the Rumble. Rumble on the, Rumble remake, the remake. On the rocks. Um, it's a work in progress. It is. It's going to be called something cool. It's the second one <laughs> <well> done. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to discuss the 1977 Wes Craven film, The Hills Have Eyes, and pit that up against the remake, the 2006 remake by, was it, Alexander Aja? Aja? Yeah, yeah high tension. He's French. Alexander, what's his fuck? Uh huh. No. Uh huh. I don't know how you'd pronounce that. In French or but. What are you talking about, Mills? That's the guy who did High Tension. He did a bunch of movies. High Tension was good, and I saw that he he did the uh, the camera work on the new Top Gun. So I can't talk too much <laughs> shit. You know, <laughs> you're getting called up for that. But uh, I'm not gonna pronounce his name. It's what's his fuck? <laughs> yeah, Alexandre. Uh huh. Right. That's what. That's what's what I'm guessing. Alexander, Alexander, probably since he's a. His full French. name is Alexandre Johan Arcadi. Hmm. I think Aha uh, is a. I don't know stage name, director name. Take on it's a band. Yeah, he's band. What's the over oh, under? He did, that West he did Craven crawl is too, and I like that. Did you guys see crawl? The alligator movie. Yeah, it was so much fun. It was so dumb. <laughs> it was. I will agree with that statement. The it dog, the dog had me on the edge of my seat the whole movie. The dog gonna die? Is the dog gonna live? I don't know. The best, the best part of that whole movie was the dog. No, oh, the dog fucking stole the show. Yeah. I feel um, like that's that's a very relevant comment considering what we're talking about. Yeah, indeed. But uh, before we get into okay. that, guys, Can't I think it's time yet. for. <laughs> Thanks for bringing us in, Shotzi. I'm still delighted. Always a this. pleasure to have you. <laughs> Always. There's some Thanks other uh, time. little little outtakes and things from her that I got to start using. Yeah. Um, all right, now yeah, you're telling, news. telling everybody the secret. Yeah. Well, you know, fuck them. <laughs> the horror news, guys. What you got? I read that the new Batman is going to go a little horror and um, is taking some cues from the Zodiac Killers story. Oh, the new Batman. You know, I don't know how I feel about it. I just I feel something. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know, man. After after I saw Twilight Kid's uh, commitment to his craft. Uh, I read an article where he he was filming a scene. I can't remember the movie, and he had to pretend he was masturbating. So instead of acting, which is his no, job, he, yeah. he just masturbated to completion for the camera crew. I'm like, uh, is that acting though? That's <laughs> but, like uh, Shia LaBeouf style yeah. method. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
I'm excited because I thought Ben Affleck was going to be fucking horrible. See, and and he was better than George Clooney. He was. Uh, he was. He was he's actually, in my opinion, okay, the best. Can we not talk about Ben Affleck around me? Because I'm just going to get angry. <laughs> I forgot. It it triggers it triggers Uzi yet. <laughs> but just let me just let me say that he's physically in the suit the best looking Batman. That's it looks the, like from Arkham Asylum, the game. Yeah, I yeah, was shocked. It's, 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 it's the best suit design that he fits in, and it's good. Um, but yeah, Robert Pattinson. Um, first of all, I hate the cowl of this Batman, of this suit. It looks I like, like his a, eyeliner. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> like, yeah, there's that. Um, but it looks like a giant, like it looks like if you took a light bulb and got some melted plastic and dipped it onto the light bulb with a q-tip and then pulled it up and then to have little little ears little, little spikes sticking up that's what the cow mm-hmm. but the cow it's a big bulb he looks like a fucking bug it's a big it's very like cranial cow. yeah well, and it's also like it's it's very like front forehead right. brain kind of cranial shaped it's weird oh. and then and then the brow goes like way far over his brow it's a yeah, very the weird profile of it is fucking atrocious looking it actually looks like it could be a character in the hills have eyes yeah like if they mm-hmm. took off the mask and had the actual head right. shape like that that's right. mutant <laughs> shit yeah so and then just his whole weird emo look like ah, fuck, that's not what bruce wayne looks like man what, what are you talking about i was thinking it was way more like post hardcore or that, uh, whatever. How just shaggy? How can a, how can a, any, I'm any. <laughs> I hate that every Bruce Wayne portrayal that you get in like film, except for Val Kilburn, uh, is is all broody and moody. Like you're a billionaire playboy, you're supposed to be having a good time. Yeah, I feel well, like Val Kilmer and Michael Keaton like, got uh, that 100%, right. One hundred percent, totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Christian Bale was way too serious. Like all everything. <laughs> well. Cl- Yes, but Calcuni. Christian Bale is too serious, mm-hmm. yeah. and Robert Pattinson is too serious. Yeah, so they're gonna play that. George Clooney, I think, played the Playboy thing. I yeah, mean, he's he played himself. He did. I just didn't like the. But that's Batman the thing. Part. These guys play. They just kind of played themselves. I feel yeah. like the earlier generations <laughs> got the Bruce Wayne better, and the later generations got the the Batman better. Right. Yeah, I like. We're more convincing. Yeah, I mean, for me, Michael Keaton. He, he was probably man. the best yeah. mix of the two. Yeah. Like, he's, yeah. he's not he what he would... He also has to fit the tone of the movie, too. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Because the movie surrounding all those are, you know, like, George Clooney got, like, a piece of shit movie. He did. So I don't know what he, he could have done with it. He though. was the <laughs> piece of shit Batman. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um, I mean, you could just... They should just make... James uh, Cavill, oh. no James Cavill, Batman, because he looks like Henry, Bruce Wayne. Henry Cavill or Henry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He looks like uh, he looks James, like Henry no, fucking just superhero. Like Superman or James He's Vanderbeek. Like I'm just saying. Yeah, my, my original was no, pretty strong. James Vanderbeek has a giant. Put the cowl on him. He's got the square I mean, well, jaw. Come on. Well, he would put that. Oh no. Yeah. I don't want your life joker <laughs> i can see it it's gonna be great <laughs> i mean it couldn't be any worse than a lot of these garbage films. So. yeah that's right, that, true uh, what that's else you got basically i had that and then i have never so i've never gotten into the italian horror stuff mm, me either. and um like dario argento, argento is, and like, all that. No. is so he's coming out with his they're coming out with his first movie in 10 years um, called Dark Dark Glasses, I think, uh, this year at a Berlin Film Festival. So I'm putting that in there because I know that's definitely horror news for other people. Mm-hmm. I feel bad even saying it, though, because I've never watched any of his movies. So um, perhaps I give one a chance. I'm just not. I feel like it's going to be art house horror. And I just. It is definitely a big artsy. art house. See person it's completely visual like the storylines suck Mm -hmm. but they are super gory the scores are always real good Mm -hmm. but i mean that's all it's all just a visual masturbation fucking bukkake in your face 
You guys fuck oh, with wait, Gaspar did... Noy? No, Noy? The, the French fucker? He did ir- Irreversible. He did like mm. Pig. Yeah, that's fine. Did... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Into They're fun. The Void. Yeah, Irreversible is good. Um, yeah. But... It's just, hard. it's so dark. It's hard to see. Yeah. yeah the, the Italian stuff, I just cannot get into it. Or like buddy... Suspiria, people love. And I was always mm-hmm. kind of like, I don't know. And then There's... I tried to watch the remake and that one did about the same thing to me. <laughs> people are real down with that Jalo, that whole fucking game. Oh, they love that, it. Mm-hmm. Fucking cannot, love it. I can't get into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's but that's all the horror news that uh that I got. Other than I saw Scream. So I'm yeah. gonna talk about that on another episode. You, will? you saw Scream too. Yeah. Uh-huh. I saw your post and I was like, because <laughs> when I I heard they were doing the remake. I already had in my mind like what I thought would be the worst thing they could do to fuck it up. And I saw your post and I don't I don't know what happened because you didn't do any spoilers, but I'm like, oh my God, did they do the worst thing that they could do to fuck it up? That's so now I gotta see it. Well, it's not a <laughs> it's not a remake, it's a continuation. It's screen okay. Fox. Okay. Yes. But it, yeah. yeah, it's fun. Goes, I mean it's 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 entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's just, man. <laughs> he, he's going to try to pick apart plot holes that don't even need to be pick, picked apart on a movie that's so superficial. But yeah. they're just, it's just not, but, not even. But we'll have a whole episode and we'll get to hear all the, yeah. all the little things yeah. he wants it's, to tear it's not apart. Even, not even plot holes. They're just things that annoy me. Right. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We'll like, and I've got some, uh, some great. horror news, maybe. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if you guys have talked about this, but the trailer for uh, Dave Grohl's horror film, mm-hmm. Studio 666, mm-hmm. just dropped. And I watched it, and I was like, oh, shit, I want to see this. But also, I kind of feel like they they fell into the trap of like uh, wanting the girl too bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're trying to fuck so bad that they're gonna give you all the fucking secrets first i feel like it might be one of those times that the trailer showed me literally all of the good parts <laughs> but, uh, yeah that's always a concern yeah, yeah I, I i really like as far as trailers go like i want you to give it, it's 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 a hard thing to execute a good trailer because you have to get enough interest that people want to see the movie, but then you have to stop. <laughs> you know? right. Like you have to walk that tightrope of, you know, giving enough intrigue that people will see it, but not spoiling and fucking up the rest of the movie. And no, that's the knows? worst is when you see everything good in the fucking trailer. Yeah. And you waste your time. Yeah. Cause I could have just watched the trailer. Like I could have saved my money. Like if you can cut it to five minutes, that's how long the movie should be. <laughs> well, that's their whole plan. They're like, man, we got a pile of shit. So to get people to make our money back, at least we got to get people in these seats. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's show them all the good stuff. And Dave Grohl, I like Dave Grohl. Yeah. I'm a big fan. But I don't He's necessarily want to watch him act. I, like, I like I like Dave Grohl as a person. Not that I, I know wasn't him personally scared or away from that movie from the act little snippets of acting that I've seen. I feel like it's not going to be stupendous, but I, I think everybody knows that going in, but it wasn't like so bad, you know? Right. Um, right. So it's one of those that, you know, I probably won't see it in the theater, but, uh, you know, I fucks with it when it comes on bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> Their video on um, the 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 um, streaming services. That's what I mean. <laughs> I feel that. I, f- I feel that hard. Um, you got anything else? That's it. <laughs> I I got a few things actually. Um, oh. So the first, you know, and again, all you guys can check all this shit out on Bloody Disgusting or Dread Central or any other number of horror sites to get details from. But uh, twenty twenty two is got a lot of a lot of horror going on already i mean we already got scream we're getting yep. the fucking the another halloween which man i don't i don't know 
I'm so After torn that by that last one. <laughs> well, at least now you've got reasonable expectations. Or do do you? Because the 2018 was awesome. And 2000, I thought it was going to be horrible. 21 was. I was horrible. Right. excited. So you're going to expect it to be, be horrible, awesome. and then maybe it'll be good. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it it's kind of scaring me off. Like, do I want to fucking? Because I like to see these movies in theaters, and now, like, I'm gonna be pissed if I don't. And I'm like, fuck, I should have. Man, I wish I would have seen this in the theater. But then if I go, and it sucks, like the last one, I'm gonna be pissed. So it sounds like I'm gonna be pissed either way. Yeah. So, um, oh geez, there's a Hocus Pocus two. Can't wait yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some cool things like Evil Dead. That Rise. was not sarcasm. I, I understand that a lot of times <laughs> people can't detect, you know, when you can't see my face. I can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> They're all so old. Like, I guess they'll actually look like witches now. Yes. <laughs> um, it, but it is going to be a year of remakes to Firestarter. Mm-hmm. Really? Salem's lot. Salem's lot. Um, uh, I'm not super angry about that because I feel like in the past, like Stephen King has got a real raw deal as far as movies go. But I also feel that if you're going to ma- still make his stories into movies, it's going to be another continuation of the raw deal. You know, yeah. I like I like his mini series, his current, his more recent mini series, more than oh, I mean even the older mini series, more than the uh, the movies that they've ever done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be man, it's crazy. It, I, it's interesting that I mean maybe they have and I just have not known about it. But why they haven't remade Tommy Knockers? The Tommy Knockers. You know, that's the one, right? Especially right oh, yeah. now. Yeah, especially with all the especially with all the government finally admitting to all this shit. Like Mm -hmm. right now would be the year to drop that shit. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Have fucking Tracy Lords do a little little cameo Mm. in it. I watch everything that woman's in. (laughs) I love her. Yeah, she's awesome. (laughs) She's awesome. Um, there's one movie that looks actually pretty cool. It's uh, Dark Harvest. I haven't seen the. I agree about that. Yeah, so that that one looks cool, and there's another one. Wow, what the fuck's the name of it? Um, of oh, sixty five, uh, Adam Driver is going to be in it, but Sam Raimi is joining up with the uh, writers of A Quiet Place, which mm, could could be bad, but so they're doing like an original sci fi thriller. Mm-hmm. So I like it. You know, we'll see. Interesting. I and like then, his weird energy. Mm-hmm. Morbius is coming out too. We'll see. I was never really into that character in the comics, but I'm I'm down with Jared Leto showing us the end game of his his cult. <laughs> yeah. He's he's already he's already working towards this end game. Oh, man. <laughs> and he he is cast really well because like you believe that he probably drinks young ladies' blood or whatever. So, I mean, I'm definitely yeah. going to see that. And I'm definitely going to see that in the theaters. And I won't be too angry if I'm disappointed because my hopes aren't like super high. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's I think, all about I think managing a, expectations. I think this it's, a e- I think that's an either or. Set the bar. That's so going to be my motto from now on for all you guys. <laughs> What was, old, uh, what was that old expectations? What was that old M? I'm gonna TV write a sketch? Disney song about it. Mad <laughs> TV had a whole sketch called "Lowered Expectations." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With exactly. crappy dating sites, that's how I feel. Like cinema is <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I need like a nice cartoon music video Disney song for me, where there could be cute birds, but not too cute, and birds that could fly into the window and die. But it'll still be part of the video because you got to manage your expectations. Uh, yeah. Um, I also have this news just came out today that Godzilla is going to be getting a live action TV series on Apple. Oh, TV. what? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a big Apple fan, but I will say 
they've been swinging strong on their Apple TV. The shit that they've been putting out. It's not, you know, like 100%. Did you see the new trailer for Severance? No. Mm -mm. On Apple TV, they released it two days ago. It was the one that got filmed at my diner. I did not. Why we're in the trailer. I'm totally going to check that out. Oh, my God. That's cool. (laughs) Oobs got, Oobzilla got to share it. Oobzilla should get her own fucking TV series. Um, <laughs> that would be so legit with just like a punk rock fucking dinosaur stopping out <laughs> fucking haters and shit. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Stomping out the lizard people. We did get contacted about like um a reality show for my job for one summer, but I did not uh, yeah. follow up with that. <laughs> That's yeah. really smart. I'm not about that like life. <laughs> But yeah, that them. would be cool if I would have a show if there were dinosaurs or oh. monsters for sure. Oh, the fucking another Jurassic World is coming out <laughs> this year. So I still haven't finished the last one. The first one uh, had my hopes up for the second one, which also let me down. I mean, yeah. we're doing these roller coaster things. The last one was I like the was. first one. Yeah, exactly. That's the best way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> it it was, just was what it was. If you're like 10, yeah. And you love dinosaurs and yeah. shit going on. You love that movie. <laughs> but, you know, aside from that. But yeah, so that'll be cool. It, my only issue, but it, here's the synopsis. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking new reality that the monsters are real, the untitled series explores one family's journey. And that's where I'm like, uh, <laughs> to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. I'm like, I don't fucking care about whack. Like, it's going to yeah. be about the family. And then yeah. Godzilla is going to make whack. an appearance is what this uh, yeah. is. You think? Whack. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, man. They always got to ruin it with fucking people. <laughs> Why can't they be like, and this monster comes out of the earth, and then this crash, boom, fights. Right. Wow. It's That's fucking Godzilla. Here. It's fucking Godzilla. So, like, you know, yeah. What more? What more? You want to see Godzilla fight monsters? You don't give a shit about the people. Yeah, and new monsters, and then people die, and they show up for a minute, and that's fine. But that's not the point. No, it's not the point. I want to see Godzilla wreck shit. This is why I need my own TV show, guys. See? It's exactly why you need your own <laughs> TV show. It would just be monsters and dinosaurs wrecking <laughs> shit. I mean, I... And happy show tunes in the background. <laughs> that sounds like an amazing fucking TV series to me. I think it would be good. I mean, that's essentially just a TV series of like what's going on in my head at all times. Like if they, there's some sort of like fancy tech that can just plug into my brain, you got your show done. I mean, I, I can see that and I approve of it wholeheartedly. I approve of that shit. Totally. So Mills is back. <laughs> Mills just took a dump in like 30 seconds. It was weird. <laughs> it's not that weird. You're pretty <laughs> solid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one more thing that. We all can appreciate. <laughs> um, when we were young, fest. <laughs> <sighs> the best. I mean, I would. I would never listen to any of those bands growing up. So, when who was young is what I was like. Damn, I'm so old that I'm no longer the target category for when we were young. <laughs> well, it's so weird because there's so many people that are fucking super psyched about it yeah super psyched talking about how they listen to this band and that band and it just makes me realize even more that far too many punk rockers or or at least who are consider themselves punk rock now and especially horror punk we're all fucking scene kids (laughs) So they That's were great. what they were. They were basically teen kids for all of their fucking teenage years. Got into their twenties, and then decided, "I'm going to reinvent myself." Now I'm punk rock. Is all that says to me. But that's that's neither here nor there. <laughs> My favorite thing about it 
is all the conspiracy behind it now because there's bands that are like i didn't even know we were on this yeah they're like and the they're, fire fire fest 2.0 or yeah yeah the people that are the, doing it live the nation and all that fest. shit <laughs> dude and then all these people are mathematically like trying to figure out how all these bands even with three stages are going to play and they're coming out with they're they can only play 11 minutes <laughs> for a fucking band even if there's no you know fucking load in load off they're all backlined this is like horror news i mean it's horrific it, exactly exactly <laughs> this whole thing is i felt horrific. i felt so bad because like you know we have a band group chat with like charlie on it and i always forget how much younger kate is because i was always the baby in the band by far but she's like 10 years younger than me and so, of course, she posts a picture of it. And I'm like, yeah, we've all fucking seen it. It's all over our social media. And she's like, guys, this is literally every one of my favorite bands in the world. Ooh. I'm crying. I'm buying tickets right now. This is going to be the best thing in the world. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but not to be a Debbie Downer, all those bands, if they show up, are going to play five fucking minutes. You're going to miss most of them. Uh, it's going to be the worst crowd of any show I could ever imagine. You couldn't pay me to go there. And I feel sorry for anyone who shows up. She's yeah. like, I'm still so fun. excited. Do you guys want to come? And we're like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> None of us want to go to that show. I honestly, I mean, that was so kind of after my time that, uh, I mean, like, I know Jimmy World, AFI, Alkaline Trio. And other than that, like, I know of Avril Lavigne and some of these other ones, but it was never like. Right. Like these were because like I left Tsunami Bomb in 2001 and like I fucked right off out of like going to shows and paying attention to the scene. And like, uh, I mean, I was in Austin and I was going to shows at like emos and stuff. But I mean, mainly there, especially at being a college town, it was like a lot of more like metal and rock and like psychobilly stuff and like like crusty. You didn't I don't know. I didn't go to any shit like that or know about, I mean, I knew of music like that, but that is not my thing. But people, I can't even, I, people are older than me that I wouldn't even think are like freaking me fuck out. Well, that, uh, that's, that's what crazy. I'm saying. There's people that, I mean, I guess I always had my suspicions <laughs> yeah. about them. This is you know? bad. Yeah. See, but, I've never been too cool for school. You know what I mean? Like I, I listen to wild and crazy shit, but. You know, it, I kind of had the same drop off point as Courtney because uh, I was a skate punk up until 2001. And then I fucked off to Japan for three years, which I was in a vacuum of right like normal shit. And uh, when I came back, it was, it, you know, everybody's into all this shit like that. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. So Jimmy Eat World, AFI, that's about like, it. I mean, Jimmy Eat World, they have the, the fucking, that one good song. I like it. I like I mean, a solid they, middle or whatever. They had a Is couple of good called? albums that like have sing alongs if I'm like, you know, it comes on somewhere, but I didn't buy anything by them per se. Yeah, I don't I don't hate Jimmy Eat World, but it's not my jam. Yeah, I don't hate him. I mean if I if I yeah. th- you know early yeah. FI is better. Oh know. yeah, when they were Yeah. And, and that's yeah, that's the thing too, is like if we were doing like mid 90s to early 2000s songs it would be great but i think the last time i saw them play was god maybe 15 years ago in austin and i went because i ended up just getting on the list otherwise i probably wouldn't have gone and it was when they were wearing all white Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and, uh they played like one I think they played the days of the Phoenix and that was the only song I knew. And that was probably the last album I had listened to of theirs. So it was weird. Yeah. I, I had a girlfriend. And people were like, not happy about it. <laughs> yeah. I had a girlfriend that was into them, but like I never into, was ever into that music or them. Um, yeah. Nice dudes, cool dudes or yeah. whatever, but it's just never my yeah. thing. But yeah, I mean, I grew up cause my brother's nine years older than me. Most of the people I hung out with, like growing up when I was younger, were still five plus years older than me. Yeah. So I was always brought up on Same. like 
like OG punk rock and rock and roll and blues and all that shit. So yeah. when all this, like the emo and the screamo and all the all all the bands on this, well, not all of them because there's th- random bands like Knock Loose that are on there. That you're like, what the fuck? Who? Why are you? In <laughs> but, so I was never into any of this shit. I'm like, you know, Sex Pistols and Bad Religion, and people are listening to Avril Lavigne or My Chemical Romance. Again, cool dudes. I like My Chemical Romance. Uh, that's that's the one that I actually like. I never. See, I I had never listened to him, but it's one of Kate's big bands. So mm-hmm. I, when I was kind of writing stuff for Tsunami Bomb, I listened to some of their stuff vocally because I knew she liked that. Well, my favorite and song I, of theirs is a I cover. actually I actually really like uh, their theatrical tactics and stuff. Oh, but I sure. would I would never call them a punk band or a band yeah. in the punk realm. Oh, in my in either. my mind of what punk music is like, that stuff that like that whole thing to me is like um it's all playground punk it's like romper yeah. room well, it's, kind of or like i don't know it's just like it's all of a sudden where like the like cool kids in punk. high school were listening to punk it's and like, that was like punk. All it's the total bubble gum the but not bubble gum like pop punk not even, just it's not even that it's pop. like it's pop music all of a sudden like and it started happening maybe my senior year a little bit and then after i left where all of a sudden you know like the cool kids that hung out in the quad that everyone wanted to be were like raging on blink 182 yeah yeah another band <laughs> and i was like never got into. this is weird you know i like some of their stuff it's fine but again i just as far as genres go i feel like that that whole snotty kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff and like for me pop punk is like screeching weasel uh, um, dead milkman agree. mr yep. t experience the queers stuff like that the queers and even that stuff you know back then you know would get on the annoying side to me sometimes depending on yeah. what they were doing so then when that whole genre came out and then that morphed into uh like this emo we well, yeah, kind when of they started stuff calling where people were like screaming and then singing like little girls over music it right. was just real weird well, <laughs> i just was so confused me. and insulted when they would yeah. start calling bands like alkaline trio pop punk and i'm yeah. like that's not pop punk well i mean i guess bands like screeching well, weasel alkaline and the to me, it was just a rock band i yeah. still like i listen to it now and it's just like it's just the kind of rock music it's not like yeah I, I mean it's stuff they consider themselves punk rock back in the day but when you yeah when we were growing up that's what i got introduced as pop punk you know, early Green Day, you know, the queer, Screeching Weasel, Mr. T yeah. Experience, all that stuff, all the lookout shit. <clears throat> that was pop punk to me. And then when they started calling all this other shit, I'm like, that's what? Fuck you, people. No, my that's, God, you're saying it wrong. That's not pop that's punk. That's just like totally the difference. Like, time, the time is just different. Like, even, you know, for example, like Kate met Jesse, and uh, I was talking about how I used to see him when they were playing in the criminals and even before mm-hmm. that. And I called him chicken wing. Cause when he'd sing, he'd do a chicken wing. And I was like, yeah, he'd rip off a shirt or like get down to his underwear and he'd crush beers on people and spit on you. And right. she's like, what are you talking about? That guy seems so nice. And I'm like, well, there was a time when people still did stuff like that on stage and didn't get in trouble for it. This is true. <laughs> this is true. But yeah, it, I thought, cause I started seeing, that flyer circulate circulate around i don't know maybe three days ago four days ago and i just thought it was a stupid meme like (laughs) you know when they list all these bands well we used to listen to these bands that's what i thought it was and then oh no yeah yeah. i mean we'll see i don't know if if people's math skills are right there's no way they can fucking pull that off my wife is one hundred percent making one of those grilled cheese sandwiches that I so yeah. ironically tested y'all so late in the middle of the night about. She's t- I can up. she's doing it. I can smell it. This bullshit. Yeah. I'm down with <laughs> oh, her. that that siren! She's trying to call you out of the room. She is. She has her way. She's a minx. <laughs> <laughs> Women. Women. Um. But yeah. So I mean, that's that's all the horror news. That's the scariest news we have. <laughs> That's terrifying. It is. Her. So, hey, 
they need just to have Ja Rule come out and be like, I'm playing y'all. That's it. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was <laughs> Okay. Now we're gonna get into this rumble of the remakes with the yeah. Hills Have Eyes, the original versus the remake. Um yeah. so exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. I guess the boys aren't. I'm, so I'm actually excited. super excited I'm because so excited. like I have excited. I have like a through line of all my like episodes that I'm on, basically. So let me just mention that when you turn on the original Hills Have Eyes. Bobby is wearing a fucking Ohio State shirt, and the fact that they don't murder that motherfucker is the greatest travesty <laughs> in any horror film. Being from Michigan, I, I joked about the Michigan State shirt in fucking Evil Dead, but no, seriously, you can't let that guy survive. That's 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 a crime against humanity. Yeah, but his, his fucking booty shorts were... They were fired. <laughs> they were I fire. threatened... I threatened my wife that I was going to start wearing those. <laughs> look, look, when you got a booty short, booty shorts on like that, you just randomly do hands. Yeah, be like Terry and stuff. Oh yeah, you know? <laughs> knee high socks, Terry cloth shorts. That's a man. <laughs> Terry that cloth hot man. pants. You can't go wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So how big? How big of an impact did Hills Have Eyes have? Do you think? I mean, the, the original. You know what I'm saying? Like that was well, fucking. So- it's that huge, was right? that was his second movie. So it was coming off of um, The Last House on the Left, which right. Last House on the Left, I still stand behind Great as movie. one of like the most fucked up films ever. Mm-hmm. I oh, love yeah. it. Like they were, it was so smart. Um, it's actually based off a story or another movie called The Virgin Stream, which is equally as fucked up. But I think he did like everything right. And Wes Craven was actually running out of money. Mm. And he had been trying to get out of horror and direct some other stuff and nobody was biting because mm. he just came off of <laughs> the last house on the left, <laughs> which probably freaked everybody out. And so a buddy of his kind of um, was like, Hey, like, let's make a movie out in the desert. We can do it for cheap. And he wrote this screenplay. Uh, and I guess he had gotten the um, inspiration because him and his wife or something stopped at a gas station or they stopped somewhere on a road trip and they're like three local dudes but they shot a fucking arrow past his head and we're basically like <laughs> we could kill you and no one would ever know and is that why he put the wheels that turning. line in this in the original about having an arrow shot at him <laughs> did they I talk about that, that in the original yeah i didn't catch that oh really oh. i didn't even catch that either <laughs> yeah, well it's it's at this uh it's after they wreck and the dad is going on his little rant to himself about uh-huh. how he was a cop in Cleveland for however many years. And he's been, you know, he basically goes through every uh, like racial stereotype, like epithet, you know, uh-huh. he was like, these, these end bombs were shooting arrows at me. And then these fucking hillbillies are throwing babies off the roof oh, at shit. me. And then whatever, well, I which, dude, I've seen this movie, I don't know, a dozen times maybe, and I never caught that. I didn't either. So here's the story. It says, um, Wes Craven was in part inspired by an episode that happened to him while taking a motorcycle trip with his wife. They stopped in a small Nevada town. A tree of locals shot an arrow past his head and insulted him. When Craven threatened to sue them... <laughs> awesome <laughs> they replied they could easily kill him leave his corpse in a nearby salt mine and no one would ever know hmm. so i guess maybe that was where he he decided to put it in there which but is yeah, why I, the, the pussy in the film survives you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. It, it's oh, weird because i watched this movie t- yesterday or a day or two ago and then watched it again today and they're there's shit, like I said, that whole little uh, monologue he had. I've n- never noticed that in this movie. I didn't notice I it just either. watched it now the other I day go back and, and I didn't catch it, it either. Yeah. And that's retarded. Because <laughs> well, I, I was just like, watched it. Because <laughs> I thought, and I, I just heard it in passing too. I'm like, wait, did he 
did he just drop an end bomb? I'm like, I don't ever remember this movie having like any racial stuff in it at all. So I rewind it. I didn't either. And I missed the whole part about him. Or maybe I just, it's something I easily forget about him being a cop in Cleveland or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, he's going on this thing and he's, you know, these hillbillies are throwing babies at me and, you know, everything and people are shooting arrows at me. Interesting. And, so yeah, maybe that was a nod to yeah. their little role. It was, just, it was weird because it was, he was talking about how he spent so much, 30 years or however long on the force dodging, you know, shit. And he's almost killed by his fucking screaming wife and her map and you know by his own family. I was like, huh. Okay, that was well. that was the the <laughs> lamest way to wreck your car ever. Right. <laughs> right. Like, dude, you've never seen fucking I mean, I get it, jets flying that low and that's like, oh, loud as fuck. Uh, uh, so I'm sure yeah. it'd be like, oh my god, but he was they were freaking the fuck out. <laughs> and everyone's I mean, screaming, he's swerving. Like, well, I, I honestly, it's funny. So I hadn't seen the original in a while and I forgot, you know, how almost like 70s biker ish it still was. Like even the names like Pluto and, you mm-hmm. know, Jupiter, Father yeah. Mer- Mer- Mercury, you know, what all, yeah. all that planets. Stuff. They're all, yeah, they're very re- Billy Jack, you know, biker ish, and that they were basically just, I mean, you know, kind of deformed but furry and very astral very, in their naming well yeah and you know the whole they weren't necessarily mutants per se it was kind of just like that what, guy at yeah, the gas station they ran off teeth in, had kids you know. with it well they had kids with a hooker um <laughs> and they ended up becoming cannibals or whatever but I yeah, yeah like, they were just they very, they very much looked like 70s transients yeah they're trying to have mutants because they they teased you with you know, the nuclear test facility and all that. I just don't think they had the budget to do the costumes and yeah, make was, the mutants. It, it, was a, it was a weird thing because they yeah. weren't mutants or, but they kind of were because he said when the, the fucking, the gas station guy who's their, yeah. their dad. Came Great all grandfather, and grandfather. And, yeah. Well, no, it, it's his dad because he says, uh, it is his dad. It was a kid. Because yeah. he has it. Has, In the original, it's his kid. Well, no, but yeah. he said, off. He, he ha- said he has- Father Pluto, Pluto or whatever had three boys. Yeah. No, P- I think- Pluto's one of the mm-hmm. boys. Yeah. So, so in the original, I thought it was a grandfather and dad because like he said that when, his son went and had a sex with a prostitute and had yes. three kids. Yeah, that's, the, that's was one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's the one he left in the... His wife so had the, a, the had Papa a, Jupiter. Was yeah. it Papa Jupiter was the gas station attendant's son. Yeah, because he talks and, about how he, yeah. you know, he came out all hairy and super big right. and almost yeah, yeah, killed yeah. his wife. No, yeah. but then I thought Papa Splinter Jupiter had half. three kids no. with a prostitute. No, yeah, but and that that was Pluto. That, that's the, oh, yeah, there yeah, well, there was there was three the kids yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, the mutants in the field. So the gas station guy is the grandfather. Yes, of those kids, but he's. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the guy with Pluto's the star. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but they kind of the make original. him make him a mutant because he says he came out all fucking big and hairy. Hairy. And by yeah. the time he was ten, he was as big baby. as me. The, they did the yeah. lead up with the uh, you know the nuclear bomb testing and the blah 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 to infer it, you know. But if it wasn't for casting fucking Michael Berryman as Pluto, who right looks like a fucking mutant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. It was it was them just being fucking hill people. He left yeah. some fuck he he left his yeah. mutant son in the fucking desert to die and he didn't and he yeah. stole a chick. But I liked it. I liked that that's the day the son comes back to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> it just happens to be the day that their car crashes that that guy's about to hang himself because the son's going to come and kill him. So yeah, like I, that's a, that's like the major plot difference between the original and the remake Mm -hmm. and i feel like i'm torn between which version of that i prefer i mean yeah me too because oh because in the original he tried to do what wes craven wanted to do because if you read about wes craven and everything he had to cut out to make it not an x rating Mm -hmm. i think that alexander added some of that back in and then added the stuff that Wes didn't have the budget yeah. for because Wes did work on that remake 
with oh, him. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All the hills have eyes have some of Wes in there. You know, he's he yeah. co sign on all of them. Um, in the original, I liked that the gas station attendant had a family connection because it it, it made sense. Right. When he was steering them away from because he knew the danger that they were in. Uh, he's like, no, 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 don't don't go out there. Don't do this. Don't do that. He wasn't part of it. He was trying to keep them away from this big secret. Right. And then when he comes back, he's like, oh, no, you got caught up in this shit. He comes clean and he gives this big exposition explaining why they're all fucked up and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And in the remake, it was the opposite. He was being like, forced into yeah, the sending the fodder down the way thing. there's there's no relation or whatever but uh like it kind of fell like <laughs> when it came to the exposition when dude's just walking in and he has all these convenient clippings on the board of everything you might ever want to know of why these dudes are fucking you up including photos of the fucked up babies i was like Okay, so that's real weak storytelling right there. Like, y'all are really yeah. just taking the easy path here. But I feel like I feel like they could have probably done that storyline better because, like, at some point, wouldn't you, like, just warn motherfuckers, hey, hey, there's some crazy motherfuckers. If you go down this path, that'll murder you. Don't go out there in the first scenario. Right. Uh, but So I like the second But scenario. then he tells them to go down that road. Yeah, yeah, which I'm is like, weird, fuck. you know? Yeah, I'm like, come on, come on. You know, it was all back and forth. So I, I feel like that's the main divergence of the two. Oh, and I'm torn between which version of that I like better. Well, yeah, the, the remake, the remake is a monster movie. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this one is just, it, it's similar to The Last House on the Left, transient fucking hill people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, there's more layers with that with the original because of the family connection. I I feel like it's just a more cohesive story Mm. because even in the remake, I almost feel like they're two different movies, like the beginning and the end, like the end gets a full blown monster movie where the beginning is still trying to kind of stay true to the original. So for me, I don't know. I liked it pops off. And I, I, like I did not like kind it. of all the like white trash kind of like because there's also I mean levels of kind of inbreeding or nuclear right. mutant stuff going on. But that's the thing is it's not even it shows in-breed. them like right. Well, yeah. I think it's probably a culmination, like a combination yeah. of things, but they um but they show them like when they go through the house and they show them and how they live and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's a kind of interesting tie-in and even like the little girl. Mm. um like i love the parts that stay true to it but i i really do think because one of the big things <clears throat> so there were like three areas they had to cut to not get the x rating and one was like the trailer rape scene mm-hmm. they said they cut out like a big chunk of that the um burning of the cop the dad mm-hmm. scene and then um that final kind of scene where they're chasing him around and you know right. how it ends um so i don't know i almost i feel like the remake is kind of a way of how the original could have been in a way well, yeah i don't know i, I, I mean look it's at like these two movies for a newer like... horror movie it's fucking i mean newer it's like 15 16 years old <laughs> yeah. but it's it's fucking it's brutal like that and especially a remake. that is like non-stop action yeah. and it's fucking it, it, so so like i saw this in the weirdest way ever i was living one in florida (laughs) well i was living in florida at the time and i worked yeah this gets good and i i worked at like a chain like upscale chain restaurant but it was my birthday and usually we would all go out partying and then barely sleep and work brunch the next day well and a lot of people we worked with despite you know, heavy drinking and drug use were like super Southern Baptist, didn't cuss. I mean, you see that a lot in the deep South. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I was like, I don't want to go to Captain Funds tonight. I want to go see a movie for my birthday. Captain Funds. Oh yeah, that's where we went. On the beach. But anyways, so like I feel like that's what Kid Rock calls his house. <laughs> yeah, probably. And I, 
Kid Rock's picture was in Captain Buns, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Signed. But and there were poles. Yeah, well. There were poles. Are you um, sure you didn't go to Kids Rock's house in the future? I didn't dance on any poles, but I'm just saying Captain Boo. Buns had poles. Boo. I was playing pool and taking shots. Regard okay, we're getting off track. <laughs> <laughs> It's my birthday and this movie had just come out and I'm like, I want to go see a movie before we go out to the bar. So I think about six or seven of the people I worked with agreed, including one of my best friends at the time. And she had just gotten her wisdom teeth removed (laughs) and she had never taken painkillers before. And she, Can I just stop you there and tell Mm -hmm. you? That when I got, it took me 40 some years to get my first wisdom tooth out because they mm-hmm. all came in. It just happened to yeah. get a fucking cavity that I never knew I had. And by the time it, I noticed it had already fucked the root up. So I like, eh, kind of got to take it out. Anyway, I didn't want, I didn't want, I just wanted local anesthesia. And they mm-hmm. were like, of course they wanted me to take the fucking knock me out because they wanted the money. Yeah. But, all I know is I was so happy. I might have even talked about this before, but I was so happy I didn't wake up and say a bunch of shit <laughs> that you you know what I mean you shouldn't say. I was like, oh fuck. I mean, I went out, they put some elbows oh, on for me. My dad tried. He was asking me crazy questions, and I woke up like with my mouth shut and just kept shaking my head no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe I did. I don't know, but I just remember <laughs> singing Elvis with the one Filipino nurse because <laughs> we had already, you know, already, you know, after, you know, mm-hmm. being in well, they deep, karaoke. With, they yeah, karaoke. being in deep with the Filipinos for a while, I was just tossing out some Tagalog and she's like, Oh, Napaka Elvis Ganda Botalica, baby. Uh-huh. She's mm-hmm. like, oh, you like Elvis? <laughs> yeah, I'll put on some Elvis for you. And uh, so we go, I go out on a high note. So that Filipino nurse and black nurse, and we we're just talking about fucking like, Elvis and, food and shit and it would do we i just went out happy i wake up and i'm just like i just remember coming to so it was just like i was out and then i woke up i don't remember coming out of the fog or anything Mm -hmm. and everyone seemed chill so i'm assuming i didn't pop off of some like (laughs) weird shit about Mm -hmm. finger and buttholes or shitting on walls or anything the videos are crazy what people do yeah i'm like i don't want i hope i don't want to do that but anyway i just wanted to put that whole thing in there Cool. That was cool of mine too. <clears throat> but so my friend who had never taken any painkillers, who is jacked up on painkillers. Mm-hmm. So we all go to this theater called Silver Screen. And <clears throat> it is like if you like a truck stop or like a shitty, shitty version of Alamo Draft House in a way that <clears throat> like you walk in, they have food, but it's just like, you know, frozen fried stuff. And um, <clears throat> they have all these Rona. tables. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just getting over being sick not that long ago, too. Uh, That's what I anyways, thought. Anyways, you walk in. There's like 10 tables. And it's got the, the stools that you can like shake back and forth around mm-hmm. the tables. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we go in. And you can drink, too. So everybody's getting beers and whatever. And... Uh, I look over at my friend and they're asking me what it's about. And I'm like, well, it's a horror movie. And they're like, we fucking like most hadn't seen horror movies. And I'm like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like it's <laughs> modern horror movie. It's going to be, you know, whatever. And my friend who had her wisdom teeth out rolls out a flask. And I'm like, what are you doing? You've never taken painkillers. And she's like, I'm watching a horror movie. I'm going to drink. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So there's no one else in the theater. Ross Faden shit right and, there. And then the movie starts. And these four black girls roll in. And they're pissed because the movie they wanted to see was sold out. But they're like, whatever, we're going to see it. And they're just immediately like pissed talking over the movie. They start talking to us. We make friends. They're drinking out of our flask. We're buying each other beers. Oh, the good old days. Trailers. You could just swap spit with <laughs> yeah. raw yeah. dog's glass. No, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So we were sharing germs and stuff. Um, no, we're, we weren't thinking of COVID, you know, <clears throat> but uh, so anyways, we're, we're making friends 
and they're like my friends are like no ask her what this movie's about because we don't fucking know and they're asking me and i'm like i mean mutants a family you know i'm, I'm like i don't know exactly how the remake's gonna go but you know whatever so the trailer's over and the movie starts <clears throat> and like maybe i don't know 15 minutes in the movie when like stuff's starting to get weird my friend who's on the painkiller starts screaming and I look over and she's been drinking her soda with a straw. And then she has like a vodka soda with two straws. So she's like mind erasing her, it, not realizing what dry sockets are. Right. So she screams right as the point, right at the point where the first dog dies. Mm-hmm. So like <laughs> black girls jump out of their seats <laughs> and like we all turn at our table and we think she's screaming because the dog right right and she just starts grabbing her mouth and then she starts pulling bloody gauze out of her mouth <laughs> so the oh, girls she's all the, fucked up. the girls at the table next to us are like what the fuck is going on she's pulling like bloody shit out of her mouth and screaming I she runs to the bathroom signed up for yeah so she runs to the bathroom so she had dry sockets so i like get some warm water in her mouth calm her down and like did they not tell you to drink out of straws and you should be getting drunk on this anyway so we right. go back in and at that point, it's like a couple minutes before the trailer scene. Mm-hmm. And three of the girls at the table next to us are still being kind of loud and laughing and they're just having fun. And some of the people at my table are too. And I'm like, this is great since now these people have seen a horror movie that they're just getting drunk and laughing because I can already tell this movie is going to be a little bit more violent than I thought. And I'm like, I'm the asshole who brought them all here and they're not going to sleep and they're all going to hate me. <laughs> So, you know, everyone's kind of whatever. And then the trailer scene happens and the rape. And then all of a sudden the like, <clears throat> the tone changes and everyone who had been laughing is getting quiet. But there was one girl at the table yeah. who you could tell was kind of like the stoic friend who like had her shit together, wasn't drinking that much and keeping her cool. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, like just loud as shit, she's like, and all my friends are looking at me like, what the fuck are you making us watch? This like guy is raping this chick and there's a baby. And all of a sudden, the one who had been quiet is like, mm-mm. mm-mm. <laughs> she was like, I would bite that motherfucking mutant dick off right then, right then. No way. Like, she's like, this would not be happening. This is my motherfucking family. And she just like is standing and having this thing and then right about that time the other girl comes in and the mutant starts breastfeeding her right. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's like oh no no my fucking titty ain't ever going in a mutant mouth like just but it, but anyways it ended up being one of my favorite uh, movie watching experiences of my life if not yeah, be the, just because I am like I am gonna fucking traumatize these people I work with and they're never gonna talk to me again and thank fucking god for alcohol and those women who sat next to us because their movie was sold out because <laughs> i swear to christ if they hadn't have been in there uh it would have gone so fucking differently <laughs> and like because there were parts in that that i was like i just i was just like looking at my friends and co-workers and looking at the screen like fuck like they've never even they don't know what they got you know, into I gotta like say, there's the nothing better than a horror movie in the hood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it's audience participation. Like, it's yeah. like going to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but it's like anything you see, you know? I mean, like, yeah. there's lots of movies that I do not enjoy going to a hood movie theater and watching. But of course. Horror is Schindler's the List. Best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, probably not. <laughs> But right. it, may, and it actually might make it better, really. Right. <laughs> Horror is fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it made it so much fun. And it, and it was so funny because at the end, you know, when they actually start, you know, mutants start dying and getting hurt and different stuff. I mean, both tables were like up and cheering and like screaming at the screen. And it was this like interactive thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm someone who can like tone shit out if I need to, to like still watch a movie. So I, I didn't. I, like the whole experience was just super super cool but it's funny because i'm still friends with some of these people on facebook and like at least once a year someone will tag me about like me taking them to see like the most fucked up movie in the world but thank <laughs> god it was a funny experience <laughs> and, uh, but it's i like wish i had uh 
stay in contact with those women who sat next to us because they were fucking <laughs> yeah, that great. Been rad. They were so, I mean, but just it, no, it's funny. They're trying to get it, you to cash up them on their birthday and shit. I know, <laughs> I know their time. You got stamps? Come on, I know. I, I know the hustle. <laughs> yeah, it's hey just, man, it's so funny. I, lo- I, lo- I love, like, love me some black women them. though. Love no, me some black was, women. I mean, I have used, officially, I have so used I. the term. <laughs> I have used the term like get that mutant dick away from me or like <laughs> some of the shit she said throughout my life. So one of the, good line. One of the so, greatest uh, experiences. It's a great segue. So me oh. and my wife, we, we have been married for a long time. And as I, I've mentioned pre- in previous podcasts, uh, I, I've been a very wild human being my whole no, life. I'm just thinking, of, thinking about mutant it's dicks right now. Opposite. No, it, this is a perfect segue. And I'm sorry, but this is perfect. So uh, our Dude, first, I have another like, segue about dicks. But <laughs> our first Christmas together, you know, like as as married couple together, right? Well, you got to do something really sweet, and I put a lot of thought behind the gift, and, you know, planned it out. And she's like, "What'd you get me for Christmas?" I gotta tell you. She's like, "No, tell me." She just kept harassing me, like I'm gonna ruin some surprise. So my sarcastic ass was like, "I got you a uh, a kit where you take a mold of my." dick and it makes you a little makes you a little dildo. Dildo. It's, it's fantastic yeah. it's called mold willy and she's like no you didn't i'm like yeah you know because when i'm gone working you know you still got me you know what i'm saying i <laughs> gave you me for christmas and uh obviously i had not because i was just trying to get her to shut the fuck up <laughs> and so when she opens her presents she opened the last one and she's like okay where's where's my other present i'm like yeah that's it you know, all these sweet, thoughtful gifts. It's like, where's my and other she like, wanted where, the dick. What are you talking about? So, she, yeah, yeah, she wanted mm-hmm. it. And uh, I was really kind of upset because all the thought I had put in to the other ones, she was like, whatever. So I just held this nugget of angst inside of me for like two, three years. And then I'm like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get her a mold willy kit for Christmas. So I got one. And uh, she unwraps it. And we're all like excited. She's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you remembered. Like, of course, you scarred me our first Christmas together. Um, so, number one, I ordered the wrong kit because I am a black man and they sent me a white dick. That was my <laughs> fault. I did not read the fine print. I was like, whatever, you know, it's going to work out. It's going to work. The color of the dick doesn't matter. Yeah, it's I mean, that counts. Yeah, I, I'm half white, so it's probably yeah. the correct half. So. Uh, we were just going to do this quick, uh, real quick. And I, I read the instructions. I'm like, ah, oh, you get to <clears throat> keep your erection for seven, like eight minutes. minutes. That's a what? long ass fucking time. Wait, okay. Yeah, it, when you're not, when you're not doing anything. Exactly. Exactly. Something like that. You're like, this is for one. It's, it's a weird experience. <laughs> You just anyway, gonna stay hard forever. No, yeah. So I'm to, like, okay. to do that, and then you have to sit there, like. So we were doing this in the. So it sounds like Eve made one as well. We're doing- <laughs> no, no, I haven't. It I've does. just, I've already <laughs> thought about it. I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, so we're, yeah. we're we're in the uh-huh. kitchen. Yeah. We're in the kitchen, and I'm like, look, I, you gotta, you gotta let me hold the titty or something, <laughs> dude. You got something. <laughs> hey, and you're trying to mix this goop and get get. You know, you, you have to put the activator in with the latex and all that and then get your whatever. So we're in a rush to do it. And uh, OK, so we get it done. We put it in the mold and we're letting the silicone set. We take that motherfucker out. And I swear to God, it looks like Freddy Krueger's dick. <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was so fucked up. <laughs> it was the, the, the most horror that I've seen in real life. It was a legitimate mutant dick. And uh, that was my failed Christmas present. So. Dude, all right. Speaking of black women and dicks. <laughs> first of all, black women love me. They've always loved me ever since high school. So we're on tour. We're at Reggie's in Chicago. Southside Chicago, right? So there's these two black women, right? O- older black ladies. Like we, ha- we were, I don't know, maybe early 30s at the time. They were pushing 50 right Mm. but they're in there just fucking just going ham these these ladies were rad as fuck we get done playing they come outside they're sitting with us sitting at the tables and we're just all talking shit and it's fucking going great and then one of them i I think i'm still friends i think she's actually still follows the band on facebook (laughs) that pulls out 
this gigantic dildo out of her purse. <laughs> <laughs> like we're Reggie's, we're all, on the fucking patio just talking shit. And I don't know how Boy we got Scouts, on the subject. <laughs> Apparently, we just got on the subject of dicks somehow. And she was like, oh, that senior reaches into her fucking bag and then just pulls out this big old fucking dick. I'm like, you are fucking awesome. I'm like, that's it. We're staying friends because you're you're fucking cracking me up. So, dicks. (laughs) Purse dicks. Love them. Right? Purse dicks. Mutant dicks. Love them. Talk to you not Mutant dicks. dicks. (laughs) I I will say, (laughs) I will say, what both what the remake did well i mean it did a lot of things well but i did like that both of the younger sisters were equally annoying in oh, this yeah. film in the remake yeah mm. like even in the original one she was annoying too horrible yeah but in the remake i also didn't like that one cuz she was a cunt yeah dude they they did the like quintessential like annoying white family dad's a cop fucking dorky dude annoying yeah. hot girls mm-hmm. the mom's just kind of like a dumbass in both but you can't yeah. really cite her for it she's just probably probably got the shit kicked out of her, her whole life Doug, he's a dead. democrat <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the remake yeah. i appreciated that <laughs> i mean it's, it's great because honestly i only ever felt bad for the dogs right yeah and it- and, and dude like as far as like a last you know, they always have the last girl and the sole survivor. Like, fuck that. There was the fucking last dog in these movies. Yeah, I, I was I honestly annoyed that anybody survived. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. But you don't I, know. They may not have. I did well, appreciate. I mean, yeah. yeah. I yeah. do like how they left it on the, the whim. But yeah. I, I did appreciate that in the remake. They not that. I mean, any dog, German Shepherd could be scary. But the ones in the original were a little undersized. Yeah. Well, they Whereas, weren't German Shepherds. They were, um, what are they called? Annalise? They're like maybe. small Malinois. They weren't Cat, German Shepherds. Dog, I, I don't know. What, I'm yeah. a dog weirdo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, in the remake, they were actually substantial looking. Like, oh shit, yeah. this dog would fuck me up. In the original, that dog was a real dead dog. Oh, was what it? it? Yeah, and here's the weird thing. They said they bought it from the sheriff's office. But what I want to know is why is the sheriff's office just have a fucking dead cop dog? <laughs> like, did they kill the dog to let Wes Craven buy it? Or would Listen, they just have a dog dead body hanging that out? That dog was black and brown. They framed <laughs> him. <laughs> they, they planted drugs Don't on him. Questions. Just hey, it was a her. Her name's Beauty. It was Beauty. <laughs> the dogs were Beauty and the Beast. This is true. Yeah, but I mean, the real dog, they framed the cops yeah, framed that dog. this time. <laughs> I feel like Hills of Eyes is the tale of Zola this time. <laughs> this is one of those shows that I accidentally happened upon when I was like 12 on like TNT and like seared itself into my brain, you know, because it was just like, what the fuck is going on? But then when you watch it like again when you're older, like the there was like almost no special effects on the mutants. Right. At all. Like they gave one dude a weird set of teeth. And then there was Pluto, was played by Michael Berryman, who is like, I feel like. It suckered me that, into an autograph. Yeah. I feel like that casting is what actually made this a cult hit. You know, I, yeah, I feel like. I mean, more, oh, God, I, the original, hands down, had better casting, in my yeah. opinion. Well, come on, David Carradine. The girls, the girls, <laughs> the girls Even though he's sucked barely in it. In the original. They were so bad. Like, I couldn't tell I mean, D. Age. Wallace. How can you hate on D. Wallace? Was, I mean, she was all right. But, I mean, what, what was what was the young girls that got raped her name? Uh, um, actress? Bonnie? No, no, no. No, the oh. character. Like, I couldn't tell what age she thought she was playing because she was doing, like, a, a baby girl voice. I'm like, is she supposed to be 16 or 12 or fucking 20? Yeah, she was asking for it. Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, yeah. <laughs> Horrible. I was like, this is the yeah. worst. I, I hope she dies immediately. Voice, and then she lived. I'm like, what oh, was weird this. about the original is the brother and the sister, they had some weird fucking, chemistry there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially towards the end when they blew the thing up, when they yeah. thought they got the guy and she, they're jump, you know, she's jumping on him like, woo. Like that's, it was a little, I don't know. It was a little weird. 
that was a, a weird random bit of engineering <laughs> from from that little baby girl. I've got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> like I, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> I just I just I think I just believed the characters more in the original. Whereas like I the the dorky brother. Yeah. Like I in the in well, the remake. I didn't I mean the original still had that the original had the feel of like a lot of those old horror movies love like the West Craven and even like Texas yeah, it, Chainsaw Massacre. Definitely more like it's, of an exploitation movie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like but even then they talk about how like in order to film it and so they had like a bunch of people that signed on for the movie that dropped out after they read the whole script. And um, there were different things. Like there was a version where the baby died, but I guess mm. the whole crew said that they were going to bail and not yeah. be a part of it if they did that. So Weak. I think, well, yeah, but I mean, during that time, there weren't a lot of movies like that. It was kind of just starting to like hit that stride. So I think that a mean, lot of decisions kind of had to be made, but also they were saying, so like that rape scene, the first time they filmed it, the two characters started making out and fucking around just to, like make everybody laugh. So they were like doing was chemistry. And different things that seemed like normal shit to try to make people feel like we're not doing some weird thing that should put us in prison for filming mm. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, uh, well, just no like film. the hills have or the uh, last house on the left, like the shit they would yeah. do. Or even when we were, you know, looking up stuff on Salo, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. The, the stuff with the kids they were like making it like they didn't film linear yeah, they didn't necessarily let them see everything at once they're goofing off they were making games of it it sounds like on this one with the um the crew and the actors they were doing that kind of constantly to try to mitigate you Lighten know the mood trauma <laughs> yeah yeah you know emotional upset and just stuff but but it's funny because even though they do that the the characters do really seem sincere in their fear and their acting yeah, I, but I also think it seems more like an exploitation movie because I think that they nailed that vulnerability and those feelings because they went from lighthearted playing around to being like, okay, now we're going to do this shot. Oh yeah, unless, that like, too. And nail this. like I've mentioned before on stuff, when you get a much larger budget on some movies, it gets too produced as opposed yeah. to right. this where it was gritty. There's that grit to yeah. it. So you buy it like I buy into it more than yeah. a big budget blockbuster type t- type movie. Yeah, big budget. They have a girl being like, cry, 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 like mm. do it again, do it again. Grab her here. Do this like, you know, right. over and over something like that. They're going to try to evoke the they're going to do as quick as possible to keep it cheap and 100%. try to freak them out. <laughs> but no, I, I agree. That's why I love and this goes back to the last episode we were talking about Mills about how just the older movies Mm -hmm. there's just I just feel there's more there's like more soul to them because of the grit and the shit they have to overcome you definitely feel the the soul that Wes Craven was trying to put into this movie it's more uncomfortable it's 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 definitely it's 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 less polished gritty and the concept is something that is disturbing enough, you know, um, and like in the back of your psyche, like, like you said, like this could totally happen. Like you're in, you know, a weird little town and some dude shoots an arrow past your head and be like, Hey, yo, you're going to sue me. I can make it disappear. Like it's right. It's in the realm of possibility. And I, I appreciate too, in the original that they didn't go over heavily on monster makeup because it felt and also like you know the 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 mutants communicated and talked like they weren't like just so far apart from where we are it was more like circumstantial like oh this could be very possible like the nuclear thing maybe maybe that's why they were a little askew but it wasn't like they were a different species of human being they weren't a monster like we we were the monsters right in that and i think that's why it kind of resonated um so I, I like the original for sure. Um, I do feel like watching the remake was listening to like a Beatles song covered by somebody else. And I, you know, <laughs> you mean far I have a horrible opinion. Like I, I personally <laughs> don't like the Beatles unless they're played by somebody else. 
Like they have fantastic songwriting. They have, you know, great musicality, all this kind of stuff. I just don't like them. Whitest band drums. ever. And I'm like, yeah, just not my thing. But, you know, you let a bunch of brothers from Philly uh, cover yesterday. And I'm like, that's the right? best shit ever. That's what like, I'm talking all, about. All the, all the ingredients are there. But the 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 execution isn't necessarily as polished as I like it. Um, I don't know who did the lighting for the original. I think it was just God. I think they just used the moonlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the sunlight and they were filming the in like 120 degree weather yeah, yeah. and nothing else because i was like fuck this is darker than the fucking night king battle of game of thrones i'm like you can't see shit right um which can be a good thing if you use it correctly but I, it was like i felt like it was the only thing they could do probably because of budget it's so or whatever. It's hard too when we're watching on these like crazy HD TVs now, and we yeah. watch that old, the older stuff. It's like I don't know. I feel like it makes it look even fucking worse. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah. No or bad. and especially because we're so used to watching things yeah. now. But like some people sh- love that definition. shit. Like those cinephiles are like, oh, you could see his pores, and you can see this. I hate it. I don't like it. I'm not like no. all up about 4K or HD. Yeah. Or- no, uh, even the last but, TV I got, it took me like three months to get used to it because it see everything looked like a soundstage. Yeah. Like it looked right. like a fake background on yeah, everything I, don't, I, I don't watched. Like that I either. couldn't fucking deal with it. No. And I um, didn't want to see their pimples and shit. No. I wanted it to be like <laughs> watched. I want out. it to be perfect. <laughs> but you can tell like the that that it's a novice, you know, directorial execution also. Because there's people who do it like really well. Like if you look at like a David Lynch, like black and white or nighttime shot, like that dude is like a fucking magician at making everything come through the way he wants. And that's like technical expertise. So in, you know, one of the earlier films from Wes Wes Craven, you see a lack of that kind of technical expertise, but like all of the, all of the grit and the, the necessary elements are there everything that is good about this the remake is directly from the first one just polished up a little bit right and everything that sucks is when you know they kind of went over budget like you know the Mm -hmm. thing is like if you try to do it too much that's when it started sucking i was like okay some of the gore was i mean i like gory movies but what was so great about the first movie was they didn't like they use like that erratic camera and the lack of being able to seem to kind of cause that paranoia and force the it wasn't like, you're obnoxious. Trying, you're trying to figure out what the fuck's going on, and yeah. you're like kind of like leaning closer to get in there to see it. And then shit, when it, when you do get a clear shot, it's jarring, even if it's not crazy monster makeup. It's just a fucked up set of teeth because you're trying to figure out what these crazy mutants look like, you know. Right. So, you know, I I appreciate how much is accomplished with less, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I I would love to find that happy medium where they they polished up you know, the less and gave it a, you know a, a good pres a good technical presentation without going overboard and look at what we can do you know because I mean I didn't feel like the mutants I felt like that was the 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 thing that let me down the most about the remake was the the mutants themselves you know uh there was like no special effects <laughs> in the first one they cast a dude with a genetic disorder that looked the part and then yep. they put in like some ugly people with like a fake set of teeth and that, that was really it all the jarringness from it was the scenario and the the shoot and then what the actors delivered what well, felt less like make-believe yeah Whereas again, the remake was a total monster movie. Yeah. And the thing, dude, the one thing that really annoyed me about the remake was that whole weak ass diatribe fucking wheelchair homeboy went into (laughs) explaining (laughs) they left us in bed. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking cared. And we obviously can see what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Yeah. they already yeah, but they're trying, they're trying yeah. to get you to like understand and feel something yeah like that. And, but also i'm like how the fuck have you existed like you guys all obviously need medical attention <laughs> right so how could you have even fucking survived for this long 
And you all have support from the gas station you're fucking forcing to do your bidding, yeah. you know. You obviously have a hold over that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. it, Get it, some penicillin or something, bro. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't... Yeah, they, they went a little too far in that trying to make them seem so fucked up that it, like... They're supposed to be desert badasses. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I, I don't know, but even in the original, they weren't like desert badasses. They were, you had like the fucking fat prostitute laying around. They kind of kept that girl Ruby. I don't know. I feel like they were. De- no, it was just sexist. The a- dudes were desert badasses. The girls. No, but they weren't either. The they were they were essentially hippie transients, just with fucked yeah. up faces. Well, they were they were hillbillies living in fucking the desert. Is I know, but I still feel like that West Craven, just like, I mean, Last House on the Left, it was obvious because that's what the bad guys were. But in this one, I really feel like he just put a Done different costume the on the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. Because in, in that time, people were scared of those kinds of people. Mm-hmm. They yeah. were scared of bikers. They were scared of the people smoking weed. They were scared of that sort of thing that, you know, the hippies, of course, that's why it'd be like father Pluto and Mercury and all that. Right. Mm-hmm. And they'd hook up with like a native American hooker, basically, and, you know, they were, they were playing into all the tropes of where you tell your kids like not to hang out with them, who, you know, I didn't go into the desert. The desert people are out there. (laughs) Well, no, but I think, you know what I mean? Like someone watching that movie, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, look, they have long hair and wear shit like that. Like your friend, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Um, But I mean, which is why like hippies, (laughs) which is why I think I did like the mutants of the new one better not necessarily the ones in the house and like the whole commune like whatever mm. area but like but the, the, the act, main the, the moving ones parts, yeah yeah and i like and the, i like the girl what like, was her name rose well i liked her better ruby but, ruby yeah being younger with the red that was sweatshirt better. yeah and it was yeah. cute when she stole it and was trying no. to like you know i like her being older in the original did you than her being young yeah i mean but, and it was funny too. I read that how she got that role. Did you read about how they auditioned them? Mm-mm. So they had four girls and they told them to race. And when they said go, three of them started running. And that one, who actually originally auditioned for Brenda, but didn't want that part, but they wanted her to take that part, she pushed for Ruby. She waited and watched the other girls run. And after they got like however far up, she like took off way after them and just whooped all their asses and was like can i have this role now <laughs> and they gave it to her that's so g <laughs> which is which does which makes me like her more <laughs> than yeah, the little yeah. kid yeah, that's totally but good. um <laughs> but it's funny because you talk about you know how the original one's more realistic so you know in theory it should be scarier like for me yeah i didn't and think having it was been out camping in the middle of nowhere and everything else and just like what a weirdo I am and how my brain works like the remake seems more realistic in my head <laughs> aliens <laughs> and having like lived in the panhandle aliens. and been around in the deep south and been, been in the panhandle and too seen, and seen and <clears throat> and in other places and you know kentucky and west virginia like uh the, <laughs> the sequel or the remake i don't know if it's that far off from things that i've personally witnessed i mean there's there's some truth to that <laughs> <laughs> i mean they're not necessarily out in the desert you know eating people and yeah. that sort of situation I mean, but, but they the could hills. be they could be they're yeah. in the mountains Dude, possibly mountain people. people so it was funny so that was one demographic i never really knew about like i had I'm you lived plenty of places and seen different so forms of <laughs> stuff well so my husband's you know from pa mm-hmm and we were driving West Virginia. So he's like, no, well, we did that. Um, but he's like an hour outside of state college. But however, we were driving back to Texas. Like, I forget. We went through the Alleghenies or something. Anyways, we stopped at a gas station that was like in the top of the, one of the mountain areas that we drove through. Appalachia's, the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, I know all about the Appalachian. I don't think. I don't think we stopped there, but maybe we did. I asked him not to because I know <laughs> enough. Anyways, but we we stopped at a gas station and it was 
it was something very, very special. I have to say, like, I have lived in the Midwest and met all kinds of different types of people in the Midwest. I've lived in the Panhandle and met all different kinds of special people there. And I love them all. Lived in Texas, same thing. But there is something very, 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 very special about mountain people. Oh, yeah. Very special. Oh, yeah. Even out here, you go far enough in the Catskills and there's mm-hmm. some mountain people. And it is a different kind of people. Oh, for there's something. Sure. Not going to elaborate too much because I don't live too far away from some. But <laughs> <laughs> Who could listen to this? Nah, <laughs> <good>. they listen. <laughs> yeah. I have I, a couple of mountain people that come to work looking for me. So mm, just to I, ask if I'm working, if I could wait on them, even though I don't wait tables. So I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think the original, it might not have been scary or scarier, but it's just more uncomfortable, like the last house on the left type of deal. But I just think that's has a lot to has more to do with the time it was made. The saddest part, though, is that there's no director cut. And like before Wes Craven died, he said that there is no copy of the original cut in existence. And that's what makes me sad because I really, yeah. really want to see what his vision was and what he wasn't allowed. Oh, to yeah. Be, because I, like I today's standards, it, would it make wouldn't me be like the original more. Yeah. Yeah. It, man, this one was a little tough because for me, they're they're two different movies. Yeah, there's two like, different feels to them. I yeah, that. while the remake has like the outline in the structure of the original, mm-hmm. I you know and and probably did a lot of what Wes Craven wanted to do and couldn't. But as as they stand now, they're just two different two different movies. One's a monster movie, like a science fiction monster movie, and the other one is just like you said we had like a transient fucking hill people cannibal mm-hmm. movie so it's really and, but was that on purpose or accident or what was that budgetary because they they started off teasing the nuclear blah 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 right and you know it's, it's i mean hard i still to make think a, that's part of it it is but, but it's hard to make a call on like i, I don't feel like i do feel like they're two styles i feel like like you said the original is closer to the house on the left Mm-hmm. And the remake is closer to like a, a, a legit monster movie. Um, but I don't feel like. I think with the gore, like though, and scary stuff, it's the opposite. What do you, oh, the, oh, as far as. I think with the fucked upness of what goes on in that trailer, it's way more Last House on the Left in the mm. remake than in yeah. the original. But that's why I, I just also don't feel think, like they're so far I apart. I think that when the yeah. remake happened and Wes Craven was a part of it, I almost think that we're getting to see that lost footage. I mean, not the original lost footage, but yeah. I think that what, it's what following yeah, what he was trying to do, which is why I think I appreciate it more than a typical remake. I think it might have actually given him a chance to have that since there was no director's cut available. Yeah, this is one of the few remakes that I actually like. Um <laughs> I don't think it's perfect by any means, um, but uh, it doesn't diverge enough that I'm offended by it. And there's enough of, I guess, like that feel. I mean, there's definitely things I like from the original way more. And, you know, as far as like the mutants and all that, there, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing iconic from the remake. Right. You know, and I, I think that's probably the big difference is, you know, the the way that the the mutants in the original made you feel was an iconic kind of a thing that would create like spinoffs and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, really do yeah. played Pluto, Pluto, um, Michael Berryman, like it's I feel like a lot of credit goes to him. And another thing like that dude has like a genetic uh, mm-hmm. disease or some shit. <clears throat> He can't he, sweat. Yeah, he doesn't have sweat glands, doesn't have hair, fingernails, all this kind of shit. And like, it was like real hard for him to shoot this in the fucking desert because he had to like do weird, like misting shit. So he didn't stroke out, which I thought was nuts. But then I also thought it was nuts because his dad was like a naval officer, like a, a surgeon or something in, in the Navy. 
and was stationed in Hiroshima after the aftermath. And you're like, oh my God, was he really a fucking nuclear mutant? Yeah, right. I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things that like, is like a little crazy tidbit that kind of lines up. But dude's such like a solid character actor, yeah. you know, that I, I oh, feel yeah. like the biggest mistake that the remake made was not casting him as like the father instead of like one of the young ones. Like, how can you do uh, a Hills of Eyes without him? It, it just, I was like, dude's still alive and acting. You you could have had him. I feel yeah, like they fucked it, up there. Yeah, he he, he could have had at least some sort of cameo. In there, was, there was no CGI that was better than him, him as that role. I, so. Dude, the one thing that I don't know if you guys felt, but... Well, first of all, I hated the son-in-law in the remake. <laughs> like, he was super yeah, he's annoying. the worst. He's, he's super worst. like dude, it just sucked. I which goes back to my cohesiveness of the first one. Like I felt like they would be a family. There was more of a family feel. Like you could tell the son-in-law and the dad weren't super close. Yeah. But the second you know, one, like fucking Democrat. <laughs> yeah. Or in the remake. <laughs> like who would like that fucking guy? Yeah. Who would like that yeah. son-in-law? Nobody. But, no, but, anyway, but it totally gave me a dead alive feel at when he, mm-hmm. you know, in the end, when it shit starts hitting the fan and he's just, it's just a nonstop gore fest. He reminds me of the lead, the lead actor and lead character in dead alive, even the way he looks just completely mm-hmm. covered in blood. Interesting. Yeah. And it was again, two different movies for me. Yeah. So it's hard. Like I yeah. almost wish that either the original wasn't made <laughs> and this one was made just the way it is. So I wouldn't have any sort of like point of reference mm. to pit them against each other to look at. Cause to me, again, they're two different movies, but I don't know for, for me, I still like, I don't, I like the remake. Mm. I think it's fine, but I still, for me, my, my pick is the original. Mm so hard for me because i love that sort of feel of a movie Mm -hmm. i mean all of it like it reminds me of road warrior it Mm -hmm. reminds me of even like a boy and his dog like in the tone and kind of the look of Mm it um obviously like texas chainsaw massacre last house on the left um and i love those movies even like the second billy jack movie the bikers remind me of the mutants a little bit Mm -hmm. um but uh, it's so hard i actually think that i would vote for the remake (laughs) which like which like pains me to even say but only because if I put myself in like and from what I've kind of read not only what I think about it but then what I've read about it and like in Wes Craven's shoes as being kind of like a starting out director and like hearing about how much was cut out of it and kind of what he want and the fact that when he produced this remake he kind of had some say with the director like I think mm-hmm. because of that I want to like the remake more because it may have finally given him the ability to have a little bit more of a voice to like see through since there would never be a director's cut which well, the could remake, be some bullshit in my mind too but the remake is more, definitely more fun yeah so I totally understand I feel like the acting is better in the original yes for sure the acting I think, the- I think it's hit or miss because like uh well, the yeah. baby baby well, voiced little girl like you know <laughs> you just hate her no. I, oh my it was so distracting i was like i i had to like stop and comment to my mom I'm like what the fuck is she doing here like really anytime she's on screen i fucking hate her and i wanted which i thought they were leading you know oh you're gonna hate this character we're gonna kill all the characters you hate they don't do that though you know like <laughs> yeah no which which is it's so hard like if all if all remakes could be like as like this sort of relationship i'd be happy yeah yeah i'm definitely not mad at the remake for sure um 
I think I'd like, have to. I'm okay. They both exist. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, and they both I also place. prefer the remake. And it's just for a, a watchability standpoint. Um, and I feel like it's kind of close to because I definitely prefer the mutants from the original. And that's like the main thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's what makes the original iconic. I mean, it's iconic. Like that yeah, poster. Yeah. I mean, I, ha- I have the fucking poster hanging oh, in my yeah. house with Wes yeah. Craven's signature on it. It's like absolutely so iconic. But at the same, but as know. far as like being able to watch it or watch again or introduce somebody and that isn't like a super horror fan, I think that there's more watchability in the remake. But that's all like standing on the shoulders of a giant, you know what I mean? Without yeah. the original, but it's also hyper violent. Yeah, it and- is. It is. A lot of it's people would. A lot right, of people, I think, would do better watching the original than the remake. Which, which even is like, like my wife. She's not a horror. We watch them both. The dad on fire thing yeah. is way more uh, graphic. Obviously, oh, the so trailer graphic. scene in, and the fucking the breastfeeding yeah. is way more oh, well, graphic. Yeah. There, there is the one. I mean, I'm sure there's probably a little more, but the one CGI in the remake is the fight where he's on fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, Mills, that I think the remake has a broader audience. Yeah. Because it's a bigger budget. It's yeah. more Hollywood. And it doesn't go so far from source that even like the core group is like super angry. I mean, it, I mean, it even warranted like a remake, which, you know, we're not talking about today, which is fine. Because yeah. Oh, you mean the sequel re- remake? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sequel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my fault. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which both I mean, both sequels, original yeah. and remake, I feel like never needed to be made. But. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> but uh, you know, so it, it, it was successful, weird. and I I get that. But it's it's not iconic, you know. Um, there's a reason yeah. why everything that it did well, it did well, and it's all because it's standing on the shoulders of everything that the first one did or thought of, and it, it laid the the seeds for all of that. Yeah. I think it it's definitely more watchable as far as like a, a a horror movie that we're used to now. A casual fan. Yeah. Um I I definitely was like I said, real sorry that you know they didn't at least cast old dude because I'm like, come on, how could you not? How could you not? That's the that's the one thing that really kind of like had my nose up a little bit when I was watching. I was like, you you couldn't give us a little, you know, or or cast him as like the fucking gas station motherfucker you know put a right, wig on something that something you know yeah, there, i will say that well he was filming devil's rejects that year maybe that's why maybe wait for that motherfucker like he's that big yeah, rob zombie guy. you're gonna fucking yeah. wait anyway just let him do his thing um <clears throat> i do like the remake anytime i rewatch it I like it more than I think I will, than I think mm-hmm. I do. I'm like, oh yeah, this isn't that bad. No, yeah. you know, but yeah, I mean, I like, like even the car crash was way more believable. Like, right? They just like tightened up some of the. They took this similar story and, for the most part, tightened up. You know mm-hmm. where it was a little wonky. They put in um, a package. Yeah. yeah, they just kind of like polished up you know what they already had but yeah, it, you know they did where, where they d- diverged a lot from it you know like when they got to the little commune and stuff like that i was like eh, i don't think this is necessarily better yeah you know stick stick closer to the source yeah I, same thing i think the whole too town. like that time period like if you watch a lot of those movies and remakes they start doing that because i think they were trying to appease the people who were like well where did they live what did they do like well that's the thing they and it's and it's like you don't fucking really need all that you know but i'm sure from the original so many people are like oh so they just hang out in a fucking cave with two chicks like that's yeah motherfucker exactly but yeah they totally could they're eating people so yeah sure they don't give a fuck (laughs) yeah i eat this baby (laughs) i do love the science fiction monster movie aspect of the remake um I just oh, the wish the lip one is just like out of control. Right? I just wish they did a little less with the remake. I felt like they did too much. 
Yeah. With the over explaining yeah. and yes. everything. If they did a little That's less. I mean, I think they were trying to appease yeah. the generation of people that are like, that couldn't happen. But I don't right. think if, it was yeah. like an egregious amount of over. It was just like, you almost nailed it. Is almost. how I felt. Almost. Yeah. I was like, yeah. if, ah, if they did almost nailed it. If they There's pulled just back like a, a little, little bit. tweaks. Right. Pull back a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, you know, cast dude, fucking, you know, don't make everybody, you know, <laughs> so well, I also horrible. I also didn't like the like almost plight they had of like feeling empathetic for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think in like the a really the like, standout half ass like, way. I like, appreciate it. Didn't make me feel sorry for them. That everybody that I hated still lived because I was I was still angry about it. You know, I was like, oh fuck these people. Like I hated them all. Like you you can let these fools not get I mean, they didn't necessarily live, but they didn't die. And I, I do kind of like that too, because so many you kind of expect when when you get so used to a certain pattern, you expect oh, uh, these people are annoying, they're making them annoying intentionally. Because then I'm going to get gratification when they get killed. So you're waiting for right. like, oh, they're about to get killed off. They're about to get killed off. And then these annoying ass characters like survived. You're like, hey, what? what is this? You know, that's, yeah. It feels it feels fresh, you know? I like yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think with a little, a little better casting and a little less explanation, the yeah. remake would have been, would have been for me better than the original because again it added in the whole right. it really focused the science fiction and the monster aspect of and it. you give a more technical execution also right which you know is well, good they had more money to yeah. you know put into oh, it for sure for sure and i feel like they it's didn't... hard because i love the original so much yeah I, but it's so I'm easy for them it. to overshoot so much when they get that bigger budget mm-hmm. i feel like this remake didn't go crazy crazy you yeah. Know, no, but they did on the special effects and the family, and then you trying to feel making yeah. you feel bad for them when you don't need to. Because all I, all I thought when I saw that was like burn it with fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. get kill them all. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't yeah. bring them to society and get them help. Like, put them out of their fucking misery. Yeah, kinder, gentler world. We gotta help everybody. <laughs> or I guess leave them a fuck the fuck alone, but let's make sure there's no roads that go anywhere near them. Yeah. 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 Or just yeah. bomb them again. <laughs> right. That's what I mean. Burn it with fire. Yeah. Just I will say from my time up. living in Japan that nuclear energy is a scary motherfucker. They had like spiders the size of my hand, and I'm six foot two. I can palm a basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like they're ridiculous. The 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 crows over there were so large and so smart that they have to come up with anti-crow devices to keep them out of the trash cans it's like people get dumb animals get smart that's a good fucking monster movie right there i think nature will find a way (laughs) i had a crow legitimately swoop down i had gone to mcdonald's i was walking down the street eating my sandwich happy kind of be bopping and taking a bite oh i got a big mac i'm so happy i swooped down snatched the Big Mac out of my hand and wing slapped me like a like bitch slap in the face as it flew past me and it wasn't dude, that's just a fucking bird man birds are crazy <laughs> this dude birds was like a pterodactyl crazy. no he was, was like waiting crow yeah. he was it waiting was a crow that was pterodactyl because crow crows are odd first of all crows and ravens are fucking super raptors bad. are smart but dude they will sit there and watch you and fuck they will fuck with you they oh, yeah. literally fuck with you. He then saw you come. He's like, like ah. "I'm gonna get this motherfucker." <laughs> yeah, of course. He's like, "I'm gonna get this motherfucker." I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Okay, okay. I Give blame me that the shit. nukes, man. I blame the nukes. <laughs> There's cool. these no, two don't crows. blame the nukes. They're just fucking. That's what they do. There, I have a lot of crows. We have a lot of crows on this island. There's like a shit ton of crows, but there's these two fucking crows, straight up heckle and jackal, dude, <laughs> that are always frequent out in front of my place, which were magpies. But yeah, right. I'll, I'll let it slide. Yeah, I got you. I got you. You know, the but, grackles in Austin. Yeah, but dude, they will. There's these two, and they're always just fucking having the fucking biggest blast with each other all the fucking time. <laughs> they're always palling around, either up on the fucking wire, a branch, down on the thing, and just fucking chatting it up all the fucking time. So crows are fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they will fuck with you though. They will oh, steal yeah. your Big Mac. 
<laughs> without even a thought. Like you motherfucker. Yeah. That's some fucked up. that's cold blooded shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you alone, dude. They're like, walk your ass back and buy you another one. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> I'm gonna take this. That's my Big Mac punk. <laughs> All right. So what so, we got? So what we got? Two. Oubliette's going back I don't and forth. Know. She's like, oh. I am. It's so hard. It's so hard because I love them both. And because of like the amount of bullshit and shitty movies that have come out since mm. both of those, they both deserve their own pedestals. Mm-hmm. They've earned it. Yeah. They have earned it. I will say as a remake, it it's one of the better remakes. Yeah. Oh, that's, I mean, that's why I pushed to do this one because I actually wanted to see what other people had to say about it. Because for me, it if you were to do like a modern day version when they did it, like I think they did it really well. And the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, it was 30 years apart. I mean, I think yeah. that they didn't overdo it as much as they could. Right. Yes, they overdid it a little, but I mean, Think of the technology and everything, society in a 30 year span. They could have really just fucking yeah. been dumb with the remake, but they didn't. And they, I think they stayed true to it. And I don't know. It made me really happy to see the amount <laughs> of violence and storyline in it. And I was really happy that those girls were sitting next to us and made it funny because otherwise mm. my super religious friends that were with me probably <laughs> would have never spoke to me again. So I think that that makes the remake have an even softer spot in my heart, but um, I, th- I think this I think might I, be a I think I'm okay. I, th- I think I'm okay saying the remake only because Wes won't roll over in his grave and get mad at me because I fucking love the original Last House on the Left. He was broke. He made this really quick for cheap and admitted that it wasn't what he wanted it to be. You're so fucking tortured about this. (laughs) I am because so much horror is shit and both of these are great horror movies in their own right. This is true. I I, I think... I feel like Wes would back me up for this. For this. Possibly. Or I I mean, I think I think you might like them equally as much. But am I allowed to just do like a yeah. watch? Could, it could be a tie. That just hey, seems e- like a every, real, every fight, like, every fight, there's not a winner. Sometimes there's a draw. <laughs> this might not be one of them fights times. I'm in. It's not American. Mm. Get the fuck yeah. out. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't seem very American. <laughs> Mills, Mills, is, Mills is choosing the remake. I choose the OG and you're torn. So I, I think... Okay. I, I I think it might be a tie. I think it might be a draw. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm not. I'm not mad. I, usually, I'd, I'd been, be like, no. I've been watching Ted Lasso, so I've chilled the fuck out yeah. on on these draws. So typically, you know. I'd yeah, say same. It has to I go believe to, in love now and stuff. It's weird. <laughs> Ted Lasso over my time. Life. Right. I'm okay with this being a draw. Yeah. No. Like I. Okay. That's weird that we all are because like I'm a fighter and I'm usually like I mean with stuff like this I I have to make myself choose but i really i really feel like i love them equal I, like little I, tiny mutant babies yeah you, you, I, can't, I think, you can't have a dude wearing an ohio state shirt survive and have me vote for you as the winner <laughs> that's not gonna happen i'm just put that out there <laughs> well okay I, I think the remake see this is the one thing i think the remake did well which is why you're having such a hard time with it, oobs, is because it mm-hmm. was different enough and probably put in a bunch of shit that they wanted to but couldn't. But mm-hmm. it was also very similar and close. I think E just wants a tie, so he's manipulating me into a tie. No, I'm, I'm just saying I can understand why you would look at it and have a hard time deciding. Because he knew I was going to go the one against him. So now he's like glad I'm talking about the original again. Because now he won't lose. No, because you keep, you keep, man, you're, you're sweating over there. You're like fiddling with stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I think you like them both. I am. That's, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Because this one's close to my heart. Yeah, you had a good experience watching the remake. Cold, cold heart. Yeah. <laughs> the original. There's, there's you know, things. I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm all right with a draw, you know? It's. 
And I agree with Mills. Yeah, because you don't want to fucking lose. Because you don't want to lose, bro. You're, you're not going to see this That's remake played doing. on TNT. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm all right with losing. You guys can both like the the remake. That's fine. But I <laughs> I could see both sides of an argument. I think the remake's probably more watchable. Yeah, for the yeah. casual fan, the original is way more iconic. Don't you know, start you know? throwing in casual fan talk shit. Now you're just now you're playing dirty. Well, no, I'm, uh, I'm being, no I'm, but I'm but if you brought someone who yeah horror movies are okay a lot of like people them. might want to see an see, old but, movie where you can't really tell what's going on other than a fucking mutant raping someone but, while well, another mutant's getting i'm just a, breastfed i just agree woman. with mills that this is more watchable it's more it fun is. and there's it more is. stuff to look at whereas the yeah. original one for someone who likes gross stuff yeah there's more gore yeah. there's just more layers which as isn't far necessarily as more things mainstream. to look at sure yeah. i mean like uh, they definitely did a new school like gore heavy oh, version. The clock but is ticking down. I mean, even just like the cinematography being watchable, you know, not even just the story and the effects, like the cinematography is way more watchable. Yeah. All right, candy killers. So, it's look, it's me. I gotta <laughs> I gotta call this. Geez. I gotta call this. The clock is ticking down because we do not pay for our Zoom meetings. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> And we've already gone in and out of this room three fucking times. <laughs> so I've got a really, really, really small amount of time to make this. And I'm going to make the decision. And even though it's only our second showdown or remake rumble, rumble or whatever the fuck decide. we decide to call it. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but this is going to be a motherfucking draw. I'm down, I'm down with it. I'm cool with it. And it's going to, it's these movies I don't think should be compared to each other. I agree. But I will, I am 100% ready to compare them to other movies. And thank you for listening to this shit. We're about this to get Monster cut Candy off. Podcast, motherfuckers. We'll fucking see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Perfect. All right. See you.